And now, coming to you from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. Hey, we went back in the archives, pulled out a greatest hits one. I think you're going to enjoy this. Yeah. And it is just the holidays, and make sure you take a break. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> well, eggnog makes you a little loopy, so it's okay. Uh, I drank it all. Exactly. <laughs> hey, guys, hope you're having as good a time as we're having. Um, can't wait to see you guys next year. we got so much going on. Absolutely. Um, so we, shall we get to it? Let's do it. Again, uh, it's the holidays. It is great to see you, but make sure you turn down. You spend some time with the people you care about. Yeah, That's point. what we need to do, too, and give the team a little bit of a break. People we care about include 1500 or Nothing, The Blackbird Academy, Avid, Westlake Pro, NAM, Heavy Osti Media, and Fab Factory. So remember, <laughs> you can get this T Rex 5 contest from IK Multimedia by going to the link below me. You're going to get your name in only a couple more weeks. So we want to make, see if we can announce your name to win this great piece of gear. It's a piece of gear Dave loves, a piece of gear you like, all from IK Multimedia. And now, enjoy this greatest hits from the archives. He's sitting on not just the smash of the summer, potentially the smash of the year. Um, he is a friend of the family. He needs no introduction. He is a great guy, a talented guy. We love welcoming to the desk our buddy, Tony Maserati. T. Tony, How are you, what's bud? up, man? Great to see you, Good man. Good to see you, my friend. Isn't it great? Yeah. You are sitting in the eye of the storm, blurred I'm, lines. I'm excited, yeah. Amazing. Tony and I uh, rode in together. Yeah. We, we rode in together today, so uh, it was a special treat for me, too. So when you sit in the middle of this cyclone, because this record's legs yeah. are incredible. Yeah. Here's a question for you. So you take Blurred Lines and a current record. You've had current records before. Yeah. Has technology made the global impact of a record this size? Do you feel it quicker? Does it feel the same? Is it more impactful? Uh, wow. I, I, hey, welcome to Pensado's Place. Yeah, man. you guys we, are, we go hard right from the top. You guys are throwing it. <laughs> fastball, fastballs. Um, it must be going faster because, to be honest with you, I, I my enthusiasm is still sort of dragging. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm enthusiastic, but usually there's a, a normal cycle. You hear it a little bit on the radio, you hear it a little bit, you see it a little bit on TV, things like that. But it, it's just been pervasive. Yeah, no, um, stop. As soon as it came out of Europe, it, it did well in Europe right away. Yeah. And it came out of Europe and boom. Right. And, um, and uh, you know, at first, uh, you know, I'm calling, I'm, um, I'm calling Robin saying, I'm ex so excited for you, you deserve this, all those kinds of things. And then it's just, and then it's just the crowd, the wave just hits. Yeah, it, it, and, it's still uh, coming, it's still crashing on it, the shore, right? It's, it's a wonderful thing for such a great guy, Yeah. first of all. Great guy. And for a hardworking guy. Yeah. And my whole team, myself as well, we've been working with him for a few years. Yeah. And, and it's just been terrific. Yeah. So for that adulation to come for him, mm -hmm. It's such a great thing. And then for me, of course, the work is, is terrific. Amazing. It's got to be amazing. Yeah. Just the piece that Jimmy Fallon and the Roots did <laughs> oh my God. on kids' toys when they yeah, did it with Robin funny. was, yeah. was fabulous. Yeah. Uh, Blurred Lines is at around four and change, four million and change. A thrift store is still a little bit ahead, but it's going to catch it by, uh, yeah. by fall. It'll catch it by fall as, yeah. as, as, the, as the biggest selling record of the year. When you start a mix like that, like I was listening to it, recently again for the millionth time and I was trying to pretend in my mind how would I start that mix when you start a mix like that do you ever you, does your philosophy ever box you in like 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 if you like for example you say I'm gonna mix this bright I'm gonna mix this dark mm -hmm. what was your philosophy in starting that mix uh, and how did that play out through the process well l let me just say that mix was a was a you know sort of not 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 right on the numbers, mm -hmm. but it was a layup. I didn't. I didn't have to stretch too far. Mm -hmm. uh, Pharrell and and his engineer uh, really, you know, gave me a great pass. Um, so with something like that, and with a producer like Pharrell and and an artist like Robin, um, I pay a lot of attention to what I'm handed, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. both in the rough mixes that they've been listening to and also in the files, the way it's laid out, mm -hmm. and their intention. Um, and their intention was evident. 
So I made sure to pay attention to that. And generally, like I do with all my mixes, I, I tend to make notes. So I'll listen to it over mm -hmm. and over. And I'll mm -hmm. listen to it with my second, and, and he'll give me some of his ideas. But generally, we're writing notes about observations mm -hmm. and the intentions involved. Mm -hmm. um, and clearly, it's a, it's a fun song. Mm -hmm. it's, a, you know, it's got Robin doing all of that great falsetto mm -hmm. and coming out of it into natural, back into falsetto mm -hmm. really well. Mm -hmm. That stuff is, of course, paramount. But um, I think, you know, making sure that it, it, it keeps doing this mm -hmm. through the whole song yeah. mm -hmm. is really what it's about. So I'm not paying attention to what I think he should be doing, or what we did on the last 17 songs that, that we mixed for him. Um, I'm thinking more about, I'm, I'm trying to get into mm -hmm. what their, imp, their impetus was, what yeah. Pharrell and, and Robin put in there. When, you, when you're trying to get, I think you said this or something? Oh. When you, yeah, when you're trying to get into that, on a four on the floor beat is so hard. Yeah. The, way you, the way either you were given and the way you manipulated some of the percussive elements, like the cowbell and some of the little yeah, the little things made a four on the floor groove really, really special, and almost to the point where the cowbell becomes another sub hook. You know? Yeah. How did you do that? Um, well, I think one of one of the ways is to remove the focus and allow the kick to be, in some ways, you know, just part of the tom kind of groove and less about the mm -hmm. lowest of the frequencies. Mm -hmm. it, you want it to carry on the dance floor. You want to carry in a club. Uh, you want it to carry, but, but certainly the bass should be the thing in that song that both is, is, is the voice mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. is also, uh, it's also implying a, a, a feel, a genre, a, mm -hmm. a happiness. Um, and, and then just the distraction of the mm. percussion. Mm. And the percussion is loud in that song. Very loud, but it's so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the panning is good too. And and just distracting from the kick. Mm -hmm. But you feel the kick like a heartbeat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well you place the kick in such a neat spot uh, sonically uh, you you've done this twice. You did it on the pink song too where you, where everything in our DNA and our past is to make the kick the focal point, but on both songs, the bass is the focal point and, and, mm -hmm. and occupies that, that lower octave sp space. And, and the way you did that is magnificent. Was there any techniques that you can share with us about how you did that? Well, I, I think I have to admit that I've, I've revised my methodology mm -hmm. when it comes to kick drums these days. Mm -hmm. Really? Um, I think I used to, you know, some years ago, it was all about the kick. Mm -hmm. It was all about that that voice as a kick, um, and I think now it's it's where it sits sonically and frequency content wise. You know how low, and then also how how that low frequency actually hits the listener. Mm -hmm. Like, does this top end hit you? strong or does the bottom end kind of come in later mm -hmm. and and envelop you those kinds of mm -hmm. issues and i think the pink song i'm i'm a bit lower yeah, with the kick are. sound mm -hmm. and it's you know that cla 800 frequency mm -hmm. you, you added more of that to your to your kick mm -hmm. not added but you didn't take out as much as you normally would that's right yeah and and i think that because in my mind pink needs a little bit more of a rockier kind of vibe, mm -hmm. um, but still with a nice roundness in the bottom. All the vocals technically are probably a hair lower than they should be technically. Mm. Having yeah. said that, they're perfect. Mm. Any louder, it would have I would, I would, it taken my attention away from the groove. Any softer, I right. couldn't hear them. It was, explain why you did that, because that's a real cool mm. technique when you want the music to, to, to have more power. Well, I think in, in general, we, we mix our vocals too loud compared mm -hmm. to what we were used to when we grew up. And Absolutely. To. Our, our vocals, are, every time I, uh, well, not every time, but quite often, I'll be listening to a mix that I'm in the middle of and say, God, that vocal is so loud. Mm -hmm. It's engaging, though, and, and depending on the well, genre. It's a pop technique. And it's a pop thing, yeah. Um, 
and I think in, in this case, it's, it's a testament to Robin's ability that. to mm -hmm. carry the song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He can carry the song from the back mm -hmm. of the room. Well, you never lose him. You no. never lose him. He's always there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's an important facet to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, I couldn't mix anybody that low. Right. right. But he, his, his ability, mm -hmm. his Let character. Let me emphasize, it's not wrong, it's right. I'm not yeah, implying no, 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 that it's no. wrong. Uh, and, and, and so that's a big part of it, but also it's, it's very much like making sure that that, that vibe, that, that, that the fun mm -hmm. party vibe I is was included just gonna in say, there. I was just going to say, let me cut you off, that, that the, the commitment to the fun element yeah. has been really refreshing as a listener to the radio. Same thing happened with Mick and, and Daft Punk. Yeah. Like you just said, oh, I can just go enjoy. Yeah. I can get away, which art should do sometimes, should Absolutely. just allow you to escape. So, you know, as artisans who, between Robin and Pharrell and yourself, uh, I think everybody's responding to that. It's like, oh my God, this is, I can get away with this record and I can listen to it over and over. And I don't tire of it because it makes me feel good. Yeah. And, and that's, that's defined, that's specific, that's yeah. not luck, correct? Absolutely, I, I, and not to mention the fact everybody involved is having fun too. No doubt so about it's, it. It's Show. being supported by. It, it, it's one of those wonderful occurrences when you make music that everything mm -hmm. is just working that mm -hmm. way. We're we're just yeah. hanging on and following. Just get out of the way. And, and just trying mm -hmm. to. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't don't, <laughs> don't ruin that. Right, yeah. right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Uh, speaking of the fun element, um, you got the fun element panned hard right. Um, there's no fun element in the left speaker. The fun <laughs> element is all, you know what I'm talking about, Tony. There is. There is. Pharrell's the over hard. there occasionally. He's, he's, he's making mouth noises. He's and breathing And clapping and the claps over here. Yep. And, and that's Pharrell. That's genius, man. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know if I have the courage to do that. It's like, yeah. it's like when something does happen on the left, it's an event. Like when the claps mm. go stereo, it's an event. When yeah. there's some ad-libbing and fun and carrying around and, and, and then, and then over on the right, you got Pharrell and 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 uh, Robin just acting crazy, just yep. mm -hmm. acting crazy. Mm -hmm. And and if it were stereo, it wouldn't have worked because it would be intentional and too pretty. Right. But eighty percent of it's just all in the right speaker. Was that on purpose? You know, it is totally on purpose, okay. and it's, it's very specific for that reason because um, quite often I'm. When I'm mixing, I'm not sure if you do this. I, I, I'm thinking about and visualizing the room mm -hmm. that yeah. this is happening in. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it's completely imaginary. It's in my head. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't there when Robin and Pharrell recorded it, and they probably didn't record, you know, all of this together. Um, but in my head, I close my eyes. I, I want to see them doing their party thing over here. Nice. Mm -hmm. And I know that the listener is Great also image. gonna know that that's where that comes Absolutely. from. So again, I've got cowbells and, and other various percussions. So there, to me, that's a person. Mm -hmm. That cowbell is a person, yeah. right? Uh -huh. yeah. So I, I, I've got, uh, those are people. All of those are, are people to me mm -hmm. and, and in this particular party I we're understand. in. Uh -huh. And that's kind of what I was trying to set up. It's, and, it's just beautifully yeah. done, masterfully done. Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, my favorite mixes create images in my mind. I don't care if they're the correct image or even the image the, the mixer wanted me to have. Mm -hmm. I just want a damn image. And yeah. man, it's, the image on that is just so spectacular. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, the stereo bus, what did you do on that? Can you tell me? Do you remember? Um, probably at the moment I've been switching back and forth, but uh, I've got a, a, a Chandler curve bender uh, EQ, mm -hmm. and um, I've got the uh, Shadow Hills mastering compressor. Mm. And the real one or the plug-in? Uh, the real one. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> um, and I've got um, uh, Pendulum PL2 uh, limiter okay. as well. I, I haven't used that. Uh, Michael Brower told me about it. Oh, so, man. you know, when, when Michael says, try mm. this, I, <laughs> try I just it. call up right away well, and say, send me that. Yeah. I need two, probably. That's right. uh, you, you and I both <laughs> use, use a modified Brower technique. Yeah. We Browerize all our stuff. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, shout out to Michael. He's one of our favorites. Yeah. Uh, so on, 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 uh, on the vocals on that, on, uh, we're still on Blurred Lines, mm. um, what effects did you put? Early on, it feels like, mm. 
like Robin's pretty damn dry, and then mm -hmm. when some of the more stack stuff comes in, you add a, a couple of effects. Is mm -hmm. that, uh, how, what'd you do with that? Um, you know, Robin's stuff comes in, in in varieties of ways. Sometimes he actually prints reverbs and, and effects that he likes. Oh, what a cool thing. Um, which I'll either use as an idea mm -hmm. and create one similar but with my own equalization or whatever on it. Um, in this case, I think that I created my own and but used his his leveling, mm -hmm. you know, as my as my guide. Um, one of the ways, and, and we spoke about this briefly earlier, um, one of the ways that we trick the ear and convince it they need to listen mm -hmm. is by changing the space slightly. Mm -hmm. So if, if I bring Robin up close to you mm -hmm. in the beginning, mm -hmm. I've got you. Mm -hmm. I've at least got you for a few more bars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you using early reflections to do that? Or are you, are you shortening the, the reverb? Or are you placing him in that room space with mm. early reflections? How are you doing that? In the case of that track, I use um, two stereo delays. And I have, uh, most of the time it's either a six, it, I, I, I don't know, it's, it's a bit complicated. N not for you, of course. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> Everything's complicated for me. <laughs> and if it's not, I find a way to make it complicated. It's my gift. <laughs> it's, it's not complicated. It's more complicated to say than it is to do. Yeah. It's um, like 16 and 14 milliseconds is what it sounds like, if I've, that helps you. I've got a, I've, no, I'm actually using a, a 16th and an 8th. Oh, and so I'm darkening the 8th oh, uh, okay. with a top filter. And the 16th, I'm not. Are they panned? And they are panned wide, but they're panned. I've got another one that's slightly different than a 16th. So a little more than a 16th here and a little more than an eighth there. Mm. So they're, they're just the eighth and the two eighths are doing a little bit of shaking and the two mm -hmm. sixteenths are doing a little bit of shaking. The eighths are darker. The sixteenths are a little brighter. Oh, I love that. Um, mm. are you, you, and then, I'm, of oh. course, I'm manipulating. I'm sending into them based on where I want. In the beginning, mm -hmm. I'm... I'm bringing the listener in, so gotcha. I'm lowering that. Are, are you using the 1210 at all anymore on that? I'm not. 1210 died on me. You want mine? I don't, because I don't I have think, any more. You know what I've I been doing? I think you gave me mine. I did have two, so it's yeah. possible. Um, but I've been begging them to make me another plug-in because the actual plug-in yeah. they had for a few years was, was quite nice yeah. mm. and and they just keep saying they moved on so mm. um, if you're listening please TC please uh, TC are make they another they're a Danish company aren't they uh, I think you're right so we better get it done quick because they're hitting winter soon over there yeah well now's the time they, they can code <laughs> in the winter right <laughs> yeah they can code let, in let me ask you a question on the sort of loop there's a mm. there's an evolution of a hit yeah. that a lot of our audience won't understand until they have a hit. Mm -hmm. um, from my, per right? my perspective as a manager, um, that, that loop is about a year. So you have this phenomena single, yeah. and there's all the blowback that happens from that. That usually leads to a second single set up, which the company's really going for, which the world is ready for, so it extends it. Yeah. And then you go into touring, so you got live audiences. I think Justin and Jay-Z are in that currently, mm -hmm. in their phase of the loop. And invariably with records that size, then there's going to be all the award shows. And then that's a bunch of television exposure, generally awards, and so on and so forth. Now morph that loop down into the, because people think it's just all gravy for you. Actually, mm. it's pressure, isn't it? There's things yeah. that you have to explain what happens in that, when you're in that loop from your perspective. Well, it's, it's certainly going to be different for me than it is for Robin. Yeah. Robin has is, is got a whole different set of curves and parameters yeah. involved in his loop. Um, for me, it is, it's, it's a lot of phone calls, mm -hmm. a lot of prospects, but there's also a lot of performance involved. Mm -hmm. um, performance in what sense? Well, I know how to mix a Robin Thicke record. Mm -hmm. I can do that every day of the week. I, I am close to him. I understand what he likes. Mm -hmm. We worked on our relationship for, for uh, several years. Mm -hmm. 
you know, so when, when he gives me a comment on the phone briefly, I understand exactly where, that, where I need to shift my, my uh, attention. I'm, I'm working on relationships. So when I get a, a call saying, hey, great job on, on, on that Robin record, we'd love to try you on uh, this new artist. Um, you know, do you have some time for us, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, I'd love to. This artist sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm still, that's a new relationship. That's right. And that relationship has to, has to be developed. Mm -hmm. I have to understand their language. I have to understand their concepts. Mm -hmm. I have to understand what they like and don't like about what I do mm -hmm. and what they're looking for in general and what their market is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I try to make the decisions. Of course, we've got a big wave now with Robin's, sure. Robin's record and, and it's very exciting. Um, but I, I'm trying to make decisions and pay attention to what choices I'm making, mm -hmm. both in what, I'm, what choices I make on the dials mm -hmm. and what choices I make to choose which records to work on. And a lot of people understand that's under the gun. These are people oh, yeah. who want you now, the oh, time yeah. is, the, the, the label pressure is high, the commitment's high, your team has to also deliver, it's not yeah. just you. It's, and so the pressure of a hit, I used to tell managers all the time, you're going to be fine and you'll make, your money will be fine until you have a hit. And then when you have a hit, then all of a sudden your act's got to be in China and you got to come up with that plane ticket and you got to do whatever you need to do. And then the pressure's on to deliver. That's, That's right. not the good time. That's when you got to deliver. So I'm sure it's the corollary's there, correct? You know, the, the thing that, that I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky and blessed to, to have been through this before. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I prepared myself, prepared my manager, mm -hmm. my team, mm -hmm. so that we are ready and we can, uh, we can make good decisions. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and my manager and my team are handling things so that I can make good decisions right. with the knobs. Absolutely. Because you know? that's really what it comes down to. That's right. I've got to continue to do a great job with the, with the buttons and knobs, mm -hmm. with my ears, mm -hmm. and, and my team has to perform, mm -hmm. and my manager has to make smart you know, decisions, smart decisions yeah, for me. That's right. Sure. The song that allowed you to practice for this was the the, the pink song. Uh, yeah, just give me a reason. I love that mix, and one of the reasons I love that mix so much is I couldn't do that mix. Hmm. I, I was playing with that mix, and I took a, a low pass filter, and I started backing it off. I didn't hear anything change, Antonio, until around seven or eight k. There ain't nothing up there any higher than that. Mm -hmm. Was that? Obviously, that was intentional, so that's, that's not going to be the question. Explain why you did that, and explain to me what, what does dark mean? What is, why mm. no high end? Um, and that was a beautiful record. I love Pink's. Thanks. Pink. God, thanks. What you did and what Pink did, special. Yeah. Number one. First record. of all, I love, I love her voice. Me too. Mm -hmm. it, it, she's, she's got that kind of voice that I, I, I could just solo it, and I, I'm good. Do I, oh, yeah. do I really need a kick drum? Yeah, maybe not. Really, I kind of like just listening to her, you know. Yeah. Um, but but I, I think regarding this question about the the overall frequency content, certainly it's tied to genre. It's tied to um, when I got that song, I checked to make sure it was 24 bit. Mm. Um, so it was dark already. Yeah, there there's intention, you know, built into the DNA. Um, um, and, and that Jeff Basker put in there. Mm -hmm. um, and he is very intentional about his yeah, sound. Jeff's a beast. Yeah. Um, so it's not so much that I couldn't have added more higher frequencies, it's that I'm paying attention to what he's, what he's, mm -hmm. his intent is. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, and I think that this, the, the issue about darkness, it's, and, and we could talk about this at whatever point, you know, no, you, this you navigate. Good, but, this is a good time, let's But do this, it. this, I, I've been using a lot of lo-fi, mm -hmm. a lot of, and, and like you just said, using 
I don't know if you said saturation as EQ. Mm -hmm. Using bit manipulation mm -hmm. as part of my tablet of my energy set. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because quite often in the past, we would, we would be on an SSL and you push mm -hmm. high frequency, it gives you more energy mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. more perceived energy. Mm -hmm. But now we have this other set of knobs that, mm -hmm. that say, well, I can, I can crunch this, you know, this cowbell and it, its harmonics resonate mm -hmm. slightly differently, giving mm -hmm. it less attack but more you know, Presence. yeah, something. Yeah. Um, so, you know I think what, that, Tony, yeah. I'm stop you, because maybe I could drop by one day and we could maybe put together an ITL on this, because I think this is the future and a new wave of doing things, because we've got these tools we didn't have five years ago, like like the Brainwork Saturator. That, I'd that, love to. Okay, oh, let's, let's, let's yeah. talk about that. Yep. Yeah, I'd love yep. to. Brian Peterson, you in? He's in. Okay, good. Wonderful. <laughs> um, <laughs> The answer to this next question for me is yes. Do you think doing that actually sold more records? Um, I, it, I think it did. And I, I think, think it did because, again, I'm paying attention to the, Jeff's intention mm -hmm. and his intention and, and Pink's intention, Nate's intention is to make sure that we are not over, it's a dramatic song, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? If I had gone big drama, mm -hmm. typical big drama with reverbs and fanciness, it would not have had the impact to the listener. And Jeff knew that, Nate knew that, and Pink knew that. Mm -hmm. And I just figured it out while I was listening to the music mm -hmm. and, and just enhanced. Um, that idea. Yeah, it's partly the magic in her vocal. I find that she has Absolutely. a way to create drama yeah. and to suck you in emotionally and to sort of, like like really great R&B singers, which is part of her root, yeah. and they can sort of demonstrate that pain, and the music just has to support and kind of get out of the way of that ability. Yeah. You know, like Mary J can do that, yeah. and Aretha could do that. The greats all do Pink it. can do that, and it's mm -hmm. just amazing. And she does it in a way that has an R&B root, but it's still pop, and sometimes rock. Yeah. She's amazing. You, you have to go through a little pain to sing like that. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can't be happy She's and do that. She's a unique talent. She, she when is. we were, uh, if this, this is not Jermaine, but when we were working on, uh, I can't remember, second or third album, but with Linda Perry, uh, Damon Elliott would, would just run a, a, the track, and she, over and over and over, she just freestyle over and over and over, mm -hmm. better than any rapper I've ever seen. She, and she, a lot of these songs come out of her freestyling, and they come out lyrics, mm. melody, yeah. everything. She's, I, I, I was, I've never seen anybody do that quite like that. Wow. That, that's the gift that we're lucky enough to be around. Be yeah. around is the, yeah, because you know I, mean? I yeah. don't have it. Yeah. So, Antonio, uh, what the hell, when somebody says make it warm, what, what does warm mean? I, it's, it's a word that's lost its meaning to us on this side of the word yeah. warm. Mm, yeah. when, when somebody says warm, I think, okay, um, I don't know. <laughs> just, it's not dull. It's not just hook up a bunch of analog crap. It's, yeah. What does warm mean anymore? Have we lost the meaning of that word to where it... I, I, you know, I think that you and I probably interpret that um, uh, quite well because we have uh, we have we have uh, um, navigated a, a couple generations of yeah. audio. Mm -hmm. um, well, warm was easier in '89 <laughs> than it is now. <laughs> Just grab a, a low-pass filter and yank it up around 6K and print. Yeah, <laughs> that was warm. And now, of course, it means what kind of compression are we using? Mm -hmm. Down to what is my attack setting? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we are, in our ear, either trying to mimic tape mm -hmm. or we're trying to mimic an old microphone. Mm -hmm. Or we're trying, I mean, yeah. to our ear. It's almost like we're trying, now warm is, has, has moved out of the application phase to the emotion phase. It seems like what people yeah. think is warm is an emotion now rather yeah, than an, an a, EQ yeah. thing, which, is, which yeah. is, I love that concept. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Tony, there was a time when um, 
when our clients were bringing us limited squish stuff so distorted that we just were confused and wouldn't know where to start, but it's gotten better. Uh, yeah. I love loud. Anything loud is always better than anything not loud. So let's, <laughs> let's get that out of the way to begin with. And, um, <laughs> but now we've got the tools to do loud. Really, really, it's improving, don't you think? Don't you think the loudness wars are like passe now? I, I think that uh, I'm, I'm, I don't mind. I don't <laughs> love <laughs> loudness like you love loudness. You're, I, a, I don't, you're a guitar Thomas. player, Tony. You're I, a guitar player. But he's refined. I, I, I guess. Got, I, am, got, I am refined. We got fired out of every I'm, club we play. I hold my guitar play. here. Oh, God. God. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Um, but, but I think, I think that, um, I, you know, when, when, yeah, Berkeley. That's right. That's right. When I, I think it was down around. He's a Brahmin. He's a down around his crotch. I'm sorry. I'm serious. I, I apologize, Tim. That's funny. Um, I, I think that um, it, it depends on who's wielding the loudness. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, um, you know, in, in respect to the, the pink mix, when Jeff is, is fiddling with, loudness, he's smart enough to pay attention to what he lets through, mm -hmm. you know, attack-wise. Mm -hmm. He's smart enough to pay attention to what he's grabbing frequency-wise mm -hmm. and how he makes up for things uh, emotionally and, and that sort of thing, uh, dynamically, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, what, I, what, of course, I don't want is, is just a flat line. And, and, and that's just, it, there's nothing I can do with a flat line. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, so certainly when it's, when it's done thoughtfully, like a great mastering engineer will do it mm -hmm. awesome. You know, they just draw you in and, mm -hmm. and, and hold you there. And, and I like to think that when I'm doing it well, I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. um, um, so yeah, I think that, that it has, it has evolved, and it's no longer just about how loud can you get it. Mm. It's has about how creative. Has 32-bit floating point made it uh, easier? It, I think it has, hasn't it? Um, we can kind of punt the problem down the road to the mastering guys a little <laughs> easier now. <laughs> I, I was going to say, it's, it's slightly deceiving. Um, uh, um, I, I, I don't know. Again, I, I think that I'm, I'm continually trying to, uh, I wanna, I, what I want to try to do is always have, be in a creative position mm -hmm. and not in trying to beat your mix out because your mastering guy made mm -hmm. it louder. I think we just, you know, we just need to educate. And I, I don't, I'm mm -hmm. not using the word educating in a condescending way, but we just need to expose some of our clients, spend a little time, show them yeah. how how to do it both ways, let them decide they're the creative people. And uh, yeah. I, I, I'm noticing that a lot of what I'm getting now is, is limited in a really more musical way than it was yeah. when L2 first came out. Let's do this. Clock is ticking. Loosen up your arm. You ready for batter's box? I was born ready. Me and Gaga, we were ready. <laughs> We well, saw her, didn't we? Hung yeah, out we with Gaga. We said. hung out with her. Said. She was very cool, I must say. Don't ask her if she hung out with me, because she didn't hung out with me. <laughs> she, we got, I hung she out with her Saturday. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> All right, Mr. Maserati, you ready? <clears throat> Dave, fire oh, away. Okay. It's wait, wait, box time. Wait, wait. I don't know. I don't... Uh, you're ready. You're all ready. I got a... Okay. Condom. Con con condom? <laughs> <laughs> Magnum. <laughs> nice! <laughs> ah. Vocal plug-in. What, what? Vocal plug-in. Vocal plug-in. Uh, C4. Ah. Ooh. Nice. Vocal outboard gear. Uh, Chandler Zener. Okay. Mm. He's, he's getting me. I had him on condom, but I lost him, thanks to your Magnum thing. <laughs> bass. He gave me like a good coach. Absolutely. Um, bass. Uh, I'm, I'm working with, uh, I'm working with, Lo-fi. Oh, cool. Kick. 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 Ignore till the end. Nice. Oh, oh, we have to come back to that. Transience. Transience. Um, Multiband. 
favorite cheap reverb? Hmm. Uh, this is a camel fat, camel, yeah. camel phase, camel space, camel space. Mm. And by the way, it's not a cheap reverb, that's just a, yeah. it's inexpensive delays. Mm. Um, like the ones you used on Robin. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but. Was it a plugin? That was a plugin. Um, delays, I am. I am, I am, I, I just have to say sound toys. That's mm. just yeah. Echo Boy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three island plugins EQ, compression, and effect. <laughs> <laughs> EQ, compression, and effect. Uh, wow. Well, you know, we got these Maserati plugins. Nice. Nice. And they happen to do all of those things, yeah, but I'll, I'll continue. Um, no, uh, no, no. You know what? This is a good time to say this. Not only do your plugins work exceptionally well for what they're designed to do, but I use the vocal one on acoustic guitars. They, I use, the, 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 I, just, I just randomly pull them up and get new sounds on drums with some of them. They, yeah. they really are special. I'll give you a pass on that one. All right, Ooh. sweet. Chorus. Chorus. Um, I have, I've been having problems with chorus, so I've been sticking with tried and true Dimension D UAD. Yeah, just all just four buttons in. All four buttons in, just because um, I haven't found something better yet. Limiter. Uh, limiter. I have been experimenting and getting into uh, Colin McDSP. Yeah. Um, the, the ML or the. Uh, not the ML, the um, the retro one. The retro one I love and the, the retro what is it? The sixty thirty whatever. Yeah, that's the bu yeah. That's got the yeah, all of yeah. them. He's got a, he's got an EQ coming out like that. Yeah. That dovetails in with the frequencies of the compressors. Yeah. Um, I got it. You don't. <laughs> um, intentional distortion. Oh uh, well, that has to be uh, lo-fi. Because I uh, guess. Can that's I use like, that again? Yeah, yeah of course. I guess I should say unintentional distortion. I don't know what the difference is. Yeah. Mm. Okay, and last but not least, Scotch cigar combination. And I'll accept what we oh. used to do at Enterprise back in the day with Teresa Lava Barrel White. I'll oh. accept any of those answers with Cindy Malt involved. I am I am sticking with and have been my my Macallan twelve. Mm -hmm. Single malt. But one of my one of my seconds um, He's taking this serious, her. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've, I, I, I was smoking a cigar when you, when you saw I me know, this morning. I, I, I know, know, I know. Um, I can't remember. It's like Harry's cigars or nice. Harry the Cuban or something nice. who, who makes cigars mm. in, in, uh, in the Miami area. Well, people don't think this is important, but uh, my career was floundering when you gave me that bottle of scotch and that cigar. I remember all those days? <laughs> Turned it around. We, we cleared the room. That, that was a way to clear yeah. the room. Oh, you know what's that. great about Tony and Batters Box? Tony can run the bases, slide into home, and get up and there's no dirt on the uniform. <laughs> That's true. Right? That's the pinstripes true. are perfectly That's aligned. True. You know what? Let's go to corner office. The guy in corner office is so cool, we only go by his first name. Chongor. Chongor. How are you, man? He's pretty good. Great man used to be. Great. Let's, uh, let's yeah, pose rocking. a few. This first one's from uh, Damon Martin. If you, were start, if you were starting your engineering journey today, what would be your top priorities? Interesting. What um, do, do I... Do I know what I know now, or do I? No, you're do, just starting I, out. I'm just starting out, so I don't know anything. Yeah. Uh, yikes. Um, I would say hopefully somebody like me or Dave or Herb will would give me advice that uh, um, says something like, learn how to use microphones. Um, um, get a really powerful laptop. And um, and continue doing your ear training. There you go. I, I don't. I, I think that's excellent. Great answer. Yeah. That's good for any. That's good advice for any. Any, any anybody. Yeah. Chong. This one? next one's from uh, Ryan Cornell. With such strong singers, do you create a space for them based on the instrumentation, or do you listen to the natural environment they created vocally and simply enhance that? Holy cow! Our audience is on fire. They're mm -hmm. so good with these questions. Um. Yeah, that's that's almost like a uh, <clears throat> several questions. Um, I 
I actually create the space, uh, and again, as I said earlier, I, I try to think about the room they're in, if they're in a room at all, uh, or, or the, wherever they are, what environment they're in. Um, but also, of course, it's not only the spatial things like delay, reverb, it's also the harmonic um, things that are involved. Uh, and the, um, so I will, I will cull the instrumentation if I feel it necessary, or I will just EQ it differently or filter it differently. Um, so yes, creating space for my vocalist is paramount. Two more, Chungar. Uh, uh, this first one's uh, from Matla. What, it, what, what is for you the most important feature in a, that a mix must have? Mm. Uh, it must be compelling. Mm. That's job one. Go. It's got to be compelling, got to draw you in, got to hold your attention all the way down the line. Yep. Mm. And th this last one's from a Roman English. What, what's your train of thought about using parallel compression on instruments besides drums? Um, I use parallel compression on anything. Uh, it's, it's actually built into uh, two of my plugins as well. So I use it on, on anything that I feel I want to I want to I want to push out a little bit more energy on, uh, without perhaps changing its uh, its hierarchy in the mix. Tony, when uh, when you're doing this, do you have like Michael Brower a, a dedicated compressor for multiple parallel uses, mm -hmm. or, or like 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 what I do? My, I have one kick drum, one parallel mm -hmm. chain for that. Are, are you using a dedicated parallel chain or? A I have several. So I'll have a parallel chain that I generally use just for drums, right. um, which usually includes a uh, Allen Smart C2. Okay, so um, and um, which, is a, which, if at home, you can use a um, just a regular uh, SSL stereo that's right. bus compressor. It's that's pretty correct. close. It's close enough. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I also set up both analog and digital parallel compression networks that I'll send. Um, I generally focus them like you do, per instrument or per group mm -hmm. of instruments. So it could be for guitars. Mm -hmm. it could be guitars and bass, maybe. But there are those occasions where I will, I will, you know, I'm just looking to throw in the kitchen sink. I'm trying to get mm -hmm. more energy from the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Or I believe that the whole thing crunched together is going to give me the en energy I need. Have you played with uh, Manny's dedicated uh, plugin that does the parallel compression with per frequencies? It's pretty cool. Yeah, I used it and loved it right I away. Loved it too. And I like the width too. And when you talked about um, compression at uh, EQing mm -hmm. with, with compression, I've I, that was one of the things that immediately stuck out when I started using that. Too cool. Yeah. Our clock has run short. It goes so fast. Real, I know, right? Flies. I just got here. I know. How's the drive was longer than the interview. <laughs> How is, uh, <laughs> how's Mirabal doing? Oh, Mirabal is great. Yeah. Yeah, great yeah. team of guys. Yeah. Amazing uh, engineers, yeah. producers, writers. Yeah. It's, like, I, it's like a little mini um, school. Well, I, it's, it's just, oh, go ahead. No, 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 you're making it, my it's, point. It's, it's the future. It, it's on so many levels, there's so much right about, first of all, Mr. Maserati, and mm. secondarily, the way he mentors and shares in an organized. I was going to say, before you say goodbyes, first of all, kudos to your team and management. Just as a manager, yeah. I love what you guys have done campaign-wise. People don't understand their campaigns behind this. Yeah. Um, secondly, the other thing that you always do, Tony, since I've known you, is you elevate the room. You never not, he always bring yeah. a value system and a dignity to what yeah. you do. Thanks. Your mixes reflect that, the people who work with you reflect that. I just really appreciate that, I think that's really cool. Yeah. So now you have to put up with us stalking you to involve you in more things we're doing. Can we do that? Yeah, of course. So first up is gonna be that ITL that you guys talked right. about, and then we got more stuff to do. I'm looking forward to that. We love you, man. Thanks Seriously. for having me. Absolutely. Thank you, Tony. Dave P, take us home. Hey guys, sometimes you might think that, uh, that at the level we work at, that everything is cool and everything's wonderful, but <clears throat> sometimes we need somebody to talk to also that understands what we do. Yeah. For me, obviously, that's Herb. And uh, Tony has always been there for me. Back in 03, I was going through a little dark period, and Tony met me in San Francisco at AES, and we went to a Mexican restaurant. Uh, 
I actually, I paid for it. <laughs> and everybody needs somebody like that, no matter what level you're at. That's right. And Tony's, Tony's the best, and I, I want to thank him personally on the air for that. But you guys find your own Herb and Tony, and if you can't find one, watch Pensado's place, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll substitute a little bit of that, what, what I get from them and these guys. So I um, want to thank you for hanging with us this week, and it was a great show. I learned so much. And on the way home, I'm going to take Mr. Maserati back to Mirabal, and I'm going to learn a little more. I'll share that with you in the future, okay? Bye-bye.